Welcome to Snowfix episode 34. It's the 28th of February. Oh, you've got to speed it up, man. Look, it's been snowing all week and we've got to go riding, so I'm going to have to hurry. Through. He's Charlie, I'm Tim. What's on the show this week, Tim? Well, we've got the second episode from Dan Wakem's Park Life. We've got an interview with Tony McWilliams from Faction Skis, and we've been playing two videos for the Red Bull Hike and Ride. What is the Red Bull Hike and Ride, Tim? Well, it's where they send off skiers and boarders. They've got 72 hours to make a four minute snowboarding film. We're going to play the UK one first because we've got a very end, Johnny Verity, his teammate Adam Gendel, and a little cameo from the Jules. So just roll the video, okay? Getting a bit overexcited. Is this what you want? Do you want one of these? Do you want a sausage? Is that what you want? Do you want a sausage? Come on then, have a sausage. Let's go ride it. Let's go. <laughs> that dog's a loser. Guys, guys, guys. Can I follow you two round today and film you? Uh, sure. Yeah, come on. Sir. Yes! Clip we can go and hit. Okay, drop it in. Oh. You're right. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> go. All right, drop it in. Right again. All right, he's dead. Oh, so you didn't get my shot? Your shot? Jono, I've killed a man! Uh, Alright, again, j right, calm down. All we've got to do is work out a way of getting this body down the mountain without anyone seeing it. Get going, I'm almost done. What, what am I supposed to do with these? I don't know. Get rid of them. I think we're sweet. Sweet? What about that bit? I'll do it later. It's the policeman, I think he's coming up. Quick, head! Oh, hello, officer. Um, how can we help you? Have you seen this man? Nah. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so I'm joined here at the Verbier Ride with Tony McWilliam, who's the founder of Faction Skis. Can you tell us, for those people that don't know, a bit about the brand and how you got it started? Well, I started Faction Skis in 2003. I'd been doing a few seasons and wasn't quite happy with the skis that I'd been playing on. And uh, I've got a background as a production designer and an uh, industrial designer. So what I really wanted was a, a kind of ski that would, as a seasonaire and as someone who spends like 100 plus days of skis on, on snow a year, just something that was a bit more versatile and a bit more directed towards, more towards off-piece skiing but also wanting a range that uh, also perform well in the park and because a lot of people here are spending a lot of time in the park, especially well this season there hasn't been a lot of snow. Yeah. Um, so what we've got, we've got two ranges of skis. One's a park ski and that's a 168 and a 178. Uh, and that's about a 90 mil waist, which is quite versatile for the park and also wide enough for off-piste. Yeah. And then uh, we've got the fat ones, which are a 183 and a 191. And they're 112 mil waist, so quite a bit more substantial, a lot better float off-piste. And they're sustainable oh, yeah. materials, aren't they? Which is pretty important. Eh? Yeah, well, what we try, I mean, that's a, a hugely important thing for us at yeah. the moment, is, uh, you know, using wood from uh, well-maintained regrowth forests. I mean, it's pretty hard with a thing like a ski. I mean, you're basically dealing with a lot of fiberglass sealants, um, epoxy resins and things like that, but uh, the factory that we got maintain everything really well and recycle all the materials that they can as much as possible. So, I mean, there's not a whole heap you can do with something like a ski, but we're trying to make something of a change. So, yeah, hopefully, convince other people to do the same. And so, it seems like a pretty much a dream career sort of thing. Like, how does it yeah. compare to other season jobs that you've done? <laughs> like, well, are you still getting yes. time on the mountain? <laughs> I do, I do. This season actually haven't got a lot of time because I've just been working flat out on the skis. You know, getting into stores, um, doing demo days, things like that. Um, yeah, not as much skiing as I used to, but no. still, you know, a good 70, 80 days a season. Which and is like, great. how much, like, are you doing the design? Are you doing the marketing? Like, I everything? Do, I do all the marketing and the design, the physical design of the ski and also the graphic design. And I have a business partner who runs all the financial aspects of things. Okay. And yeah, lets me know how much money I can spend. <laughs> That's cool. We just heard that you had to go to repress for the states because they've been. We over did, there. we did. We sold out of the first load of stock for the for the US, so we've managed to fit another batch in. So they've just gone on sale on the website www.factionskis.com. That's wicked, man. Awesome. And what's the future plans for Faction? Like, you any plans to extend the range or just? We do. On? We'll at the moment we're gonna look at next year for making a shorter fat ski just purely directed towards girls because that's a huge section of the market that was just kind of coming open and there are a lot of girls out there who really are starting to ski really well so we really want to get into that um, and also we're getting them a lot more stores this year which is great but still predominantly we're trying to sell direct to people through the website um, because it lets us deal directly with the customers which we really want that personal relationship with them because you know I speak to everyone who buys our skis and it's great and that's Working really on. what it's about for me. Cool. Well I'm looking forward to trying some out so Cheers man. Thanks for speaking to us. No, Have thank a good you. season. You too. <laughs> okay so it's been a bit of a slow news week this week but uh, we've searched high and low and found a couple of stories. Uh, I've had to take Tim up here because he was being a bit too hyperactive. He's very excited about the snow um, but let's get things going anyway. Um, the British snowboard team have just come back from Japan and they have, they've done pretty well actually, haven't they Tim? Um, the, uh, Zoe Jillings, who's been on the show before, is the border cross champion and she's now the 11th ranked in the world. And Dan Wakeham, you'll see later on in the show, um, is our pipe rider and he is now ranked number 16 in the world. And that is, that's the highest um, a British rider has ever been, that's for the pipe. So well done Dan, keep going. Um, it's quite nice this. It's nice and quiet, a bit relaxed. Um, might as well just continue. Eh? <laughs> you wanna do it? <laughs> ah, <I'm off>! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bit of hair there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so the American skiing company has just confirmed that it's gonna sell four of its eastern US resorts. Um, that's Killington and Pico went for $83.5 million and um, Mount Snow and Atitash went for $73.5 million. And do you know what? I figured out if every single one of our viewers um, chucked in $1,300, we could have bought those second two resorts. So, yeah. so guys, you know, if you fancy sending us $1,300, the, the usual address, that would yeah. be fine. You could send, probably send it as a check to Charles Davison. I mean, just... Well, Probably the easiest way. Well, well maybe, maybe it's a team. Yeah. Um, so should we do another bit of hike and ride? Yes, so this is the winning film from the Swiss team. Um, the winners were uh, Jean, Jean-Yves Michelot and Laurie Falke. I've 
probably well, definitely got that wrong. But, well, well done. Good but um, yeah, their film was a bit different. It wasn't as funny, but um, it was really well filmed and edited. I thought. Yeah, they um, got the feel of what they wanted. I think. Yeah, definitely got a good feel. And there's quite a lot of um, cool ski bob. The when when you're sitting down skiing, yeah. like for um, yeah. when you're paralysed. And actually, quite, that guy who on the ski bob. He yeah. is like a former Verbier Extreme Freeride champion, and it was only actually a year ago that he got paralysed. And so the fact that he's come back and he's made such an awesome film, you know, yeah. it's fucking inspiring. In my yeah, opinion. and it's good riding as well for a year. That's really yeah. good. It's wicked. Um, yeah, so here it is. I can ride. Arrête là Ouais, c'est un gros virage sur la gauche. 
Hi, I'm Dan Wakem, and welcome to Pipe Life. number one half pipe rider, Dan has to continually work on three key areas of progression. When Dan drops into the pipe, speed is his friend. The more speed he has, the more air he can get, giving him more time for rotation variations and grabs. Dan gets his speed by landing as close to the lip as he can and using the strength in his lower body to pump through the transitions of the landing and takeoff walls, eking out everything the pipe has to offer. When we're at competitions, the judges judge us on amplitude, which is height out of the pipe. They also judge us on like rotations and technical difficulties, so that's how much you spin and how hard the trick is actually to do. When we're training, we go through our runs, our coach, he films everything, so we do like video analysis. When we go home, we can sit and watch the footage back. You can learn quite a lot by watching yourself ride. When I'm training, if I'm not falling, it means I'm not trying hard enough. It's your another. I'm going to start learning a couple of new tricks. But I've got my, uh, my cab 900 that's been pretty consistent, but I'd like to switch that into a 1080. I mean, that's what a lot of people are throwing down in the competition, so if I want to do well, I have to keep up with the progression. Visit extreme.com for more pipe life. Okay, so going on to a few of your viewer emails. The first is from Patrick Dares, who is from Toulouse in France. And oh. it's a cool email. He actually sent us um, something about something his sister's boyfriend is setting up. Okay. A company that ma makes massive stickers, right? And the deal is, they make them shaped to fit for snowboards. Oh, right. So you can cover your entire snowboard in basically whatever design oh, you well, want. Oh, you can print whatever you want on the sticker. I, well, I guess they must be able to print whatever. Sick. Um, and if they could, I guess maybe, just an idea off the top of my head, make like a Snowfix one. That would be nice. I don't, we I don't we know. could give them a plug, e-adhesive.com. E yeah. It's like trading, basically. Yeah, so we've kind of done our part in a way. <laughs> so no, that, would be, that would be cool, but yeah, check out the website, eadhesive.com. Wicked. Um, Jason Brown, he's the winner of the competition this week. He sent his, his more injury stuff, but this one's particularly cool. He sent in the x-ray and you can see all the pins and that sort of thing. We've had a few of those, but the unique bit, he sent in a picture of the outside of the skin and it's actually got the pins like sticking yeah. out of the skin. It is That rank. is gnarly. <laughs> and also, to top it all off, he sent a picture of his cast and he's uh, drawn Brian. The really well. Very, very, very well, very well indeed. Well. And so, there you go, you win the book. Well done, Mateykins. Yeah, excellent. So, um, send in your comp your photos. We're getting some really good x-rays. Uh, snowfix at negativegravity.co.uk and visit the website, snow uh, <laughs> which is extreme.com slash snowfix. And there you can leave comments, check out all the other episodes, and subscribe. So, I'm, I'm gonna go riding. Are you gonna go riding? Yeah. <laughs> mate, mate, that's not fair. Yeah, no, you've got to untie me. you got to untie me. Oh, fuck you, man. That's not fair. Yeah. Our pick of the week on Extreme this time has to be the highlights of this year's Burton European Open in Lax. The best snowboarders in the world battling out in both halfpipe and slope style. You can catch all the action Wednesday at 7.30 here on the Extreme Sports Channel.